Hey, welcome uh, and thank you and welcome to this brief recount of the work we've been doing to bootstrap the VEX uh, ecosystem across uh, cloud native and hopefully across all of open source eventually. Um, my name is Adolfo Garcia. Um, people usually know me by Puerco. If you see that little piggy somewhere in the internet, probably it's me saying some dumb thing or another. Um, I am a software engineer with Stacklog. We're a small supply chain security company focused on helping developers make better decisions when they choose their dependencies. Um, but most importantly, uh, for this talk, I am also one of the technical leads with Kubernetes SIG release. I work with the release engineering team and we maintain all of the tooling that releases Kubernetes every month. And also we take care of all of the supply chain um, security tools that keep uh, those releases safe. Um, I also lead the OpenVEX project and Protobon projects under the Open Source Security Foundation, uh, which we're going to be touching on today. I also collaborate with the SPDX SBOM standard from the Linux Foundation. So these are subjects that are very close to my heart. Um, so let's first talk a little bit about why securing open source is hard. Um, there's been some hot takes about why securing open source is hard, but uh, I feel that as a security engineer, maintainer of projects, leading some of those efforts, I should have a, like a super sophisticated opinion, but uh, I have a very dumb one, which is maintainers simply don't have the time to implement security. If you delve into the most important, well, not the most important, but the majority of the open source projects, you'll find that it's just a handful of volunteers uh, wrangling with the open source project, like implementing the features, and then on top of that, they have to wrangle documentation, they have to um, respond to bug reports, sometimes even dumb user complaints that don't get you anywhere. Um, so when you approach them and you start talking to them about security, it's just another form of process that they have to do on top of their work, preventing them from building the features that they love, that keep them attached to the project. Um, and it's even worse when you try to approach them and talk about some new security technology that doesn't have an ecosystem and there will be a long playing uh, without anybody to collaborate. So this is a state uh, one we, were, we found ourselves in a year ago when we started trying to bootstrap the VEX ecosystem. Um, so VEX, um, as Marina mentioned, is a companion format to s -Bone that helps curb the excess of information that comes from the transparency that SBOMs uh, can give you. So that, uh, this is a formal definition, like it's a chronological system of documents that form a communication channel to inform the impact of a vulnerability on a given piece of software. It's kind of a mouthful, so let me give you a brief overview of how it works. So for example, if you build a container image and you start uh, scanning that uh, running vulnerability scans on that image, you'll find that pretty soon those scanners start picking up vulnerabilities in your image. Sometimes those vulnerabilities are in your application and you have to own them, you have to fix them. Uh, but most of the time what's happening is that those scanners are taking those container images, decomposing them, and trying to match all of the components that they find against security databases of known vulnerable components. Uh, so this effectively means that those vulnerabilities will be lying in your operating system packages or on the language dependencies that you chose to use to build your application. Now with VEX, when you release a container image or new information about a new vulnerability that may affect you comes up, you issue a new document, a VEX document, that pairs together your application with the component, the vulnerability, and an impact of state, like a statement of impact of how that vulnerability affects you or not. So the next time that you scan that image, you supply the document to the scanners, and then they will still find the vulnerable component, but they have more information that they can choose to surface to you about the actual impact on your application. So you may not be affected, or they can even suppress the results from, uh, from the scan. Uh, VEX is defined in a document called the Minimal Requirements for VEX, which was collectively written by the VEX Working Group facilitated by CISA. Uh, and based on that document, there are four implementations. Um, there is CSAF, the Common Security Advisory Framework, has a VEX implementation. There is one in both S1 formats, one in Cyclone DX and one on the newly released SPDX version 3. And of course, there's the one that all of the cool kids use, which is OpenVEX. Um, 
OpenVEX is a project that is hosted in the OpenSF, uh, and the goal of the project is to provide a minimal requirement of VEX that is lightweight, that can be embedded in other encapsulated formats, such as at the stations. Um, and finally, it's written in JSON-LD so that it can be uh, linked, uh, plays well with other linked data. So one year ago, we did the donation of the project to the OpenSF, and once we started trying to use it, the project was in the same, uh, in the same spot that any new ecosystem finds itself in. The, again, a chicken and egg problem. And for VEX, this essentially means that if you have VEX documents, but there's no scanner that can read them, you effectively have a bunch of useless data that, no, that serves for nothing. And on the other hand, if you build um, VEX supporting scanners, but no one is issuing those documents, then effectively you just wasted your time building a feature that no one will use. So we set out to fix this uh, as follows. So we first um, drafted a new specification with the idea of how it should work in a couple of, um, we built a small POC of the tooling, trying to show, like use it to show the vision of how things should work. And then based on that, we started approaching our scanner friends. So we talked to three of the most popular um, scanners and they provided us feedback. And then based on their feedback, we went through two revisions of the spec. Uh, and when we finalized it, we started writing the first I don't want to say production, but first version of the, of the tools. And based on those tools, um, we started seeing some early adopters uh, using VEX. Um, and it was these early adopters, those trailblazers, that finally gave us the ammunition to go and convince other uh, open source projects that maybe this VEX thing was a whole idea, a good idea. Um, and, but then, when those uh, open source projects started considering enabling their own VEX feeds, they hit the same roadblock that all open source projects hit when they try to build security, which is there's no one out there that can do the work. So we needed a solution. And that solution came via the Cloud Native Security Slam. Uh, the Security Slam, if you missed it, is this um, awesome event organized by the CNCF Security Tag. Uh, where maintainers of open source projects are paired with new contributors, um, visualized here by this baby developers, uh, who are willing to put in the work that the maintainers cannot do. So based on their mentorship um, and guided by those maintainers, uh, it results in like a super fun um, afternoon of mutual learning, mentorship, and improving open source everywhere. Um, the, both the maintainers and the new contributors got prizes for their effort, which is uh, great, including this awesome hoodie that I'm rocking today. Um, and the SLAM had several editions, and we participated in the third one, which was uh, the Kubernetes lightning round. And this was focused on improving the security of the, some of the smaller, I mean, smaller because they're not Kubernetes, but some of the smaller projects under the Kubernetes umbrella. We had uh, very good results. Uh, we had 11 maintainers uh, actively coaching and guiding the new contributors, reviewing their PRs, including these four awesome individuals who chose to spend their Friday afternoon actively in the Zoom call with all of the new contributors, answering questions and guiding them. And um, we had 20 new contributors opening those PRs into these six projects which we chose based on their usage and the number and cadence of the releases. So thank you to the maintainers, thank you to the new contributors, uh, thank you to Katie Greenlee from CNCF who uh, helped us with the logistics and especially thank you to this guy. So if you see Eddie uh, somewhere here in the conference, please buy him a beer. He was the sole driving force uh, behind the slam. Um, but anyway back to the um, Kubernetes, um, to the OpenVEX journey. So when we left this journey, um, OpenVEX was missing that last final link to complete the ecosystem loop. Uh, and that's where you put in the new contributors. So those new contributors um, and their efforts and their enthusiasm finally started opening and creating the VEX feeds for the projects. Some of those VEX feeds were, I mean, initially low quality, some of them e even empty. But that, that uh, work pro finally provided the project with the, uh, with the feedback loop that we needed so to understand where the gaps in our tooling were, how we could make their, um, 
their lives easier when creating those, uh, uh, those leg feeds. So once that loop started uh, com completed, we started getting feedback and improving things, and that's when we started seeing uh, the magic happening. So I, let me, hopefully it will work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that was finally when the ecosystem completed and we started seeing that it w the ecosystem was finally alive and we started seeing all sorts of wonderful things happening. So first of all, people uh, without the intervention of the OpenVex maintainers started creating libraries in other languages to read and to parse those documents. Um, other folks started creating content on YouTube, uh, writing blog posts and mentioning the, the project in, in um, uh, podcasts, for example. And, but most importantly, what we started seeing was that um, OpenVex features were being added to projects and products that had nothing to do with us, like finally confirming that the ecosystem was alive and finally confirming that um, alignment was a key to improving open source security. So if you're a maintainer, you may not have the time to implement the security for your projects, but a new contributor has the enthusiasm and the time to put in the work that you need if they're properly guided, because what they need is community help inserting themselves into the community. Scanners need better results, and they can achieve that by talking to an open source security project like OpenVex. And OpenVex needed an ecosystem, and we finally got one by ensuring that uh, everybody was talking to the right peers. Uh, finally, bringing like a less gloomy scenario and confirming that uh, working together, we can take open source to a better place where it is today. Anyway, thank you.